Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everybody. Good morning. This is Laurie Smith on Blog Talk Radio. It is Tuesday morning, April the 20th, 6 o'clock here in the morning, Calgary, Alberta. I'm happy to be here, and uh, we're on for 30 minutes. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com, and the chat room is open, and if anybody's up at this time and wants to sit in the chat room, that's great. If not, that's fine. And um, we're looking at an article I found on Stop It Now, and that is www dot stop it now dot org. Let me just make sure I'll make sure that that's right. Um, it's a great article regarding uh, child sexual abuse, and that's what we're looking at this week. And we have I also had some other information from uh, the Awareness Center, www dot the Awareness Center dot org. Uh, it's coping uh, common coping mechanisms used by adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse, and so. That's what we're looking at this week, and um, we just can't talk about this enough. Um, you know, this is not a professional show. I don't hold any professional counseling certificates or therapist certificates. I'm just a survivor who's walked out by most of my healing on my own, and um, I'm also a student at a part-time student at MRU here in Calgary, studying child rights and human rights. And um, I just think the issues surrounding child abuse are just not talked about enough. And there are lots of voices out there, and thank God. And you know, I, I'm just wanted to be one more voice, you know, just add my voice to theirs, and just, I hope other people will do the same, and uh, because, you know, we only hear about child abuse when it's too late. Uh, reports in the paper and the news of children being killed at the hands of caregivers or, or parents or child sexual predators and whatnot, and if they're not killed, then they're in the hospital due to abuse-related injuries, so, and then if they're not killed, they go on to live a life of uh, a life, a horror, a horror-filled uh, life, you know, trying to deal with and, and cope with and learn how to get over uh, these tragedies that happen to children all the time. So um, that's why I'm doing this show, just to be one more voice out there and, and keep talking about child abuse how, and, and prevention and awareness and education regarding child abuse. It's just so important. So I'm glad you could tune in. And, you know, the subject of abuse is very sensitive. So if you're if you're sensitive to the subject of any kind of abuse or violence or domestic violence, domestic abuse, sexual assault, sexual abuse, uh, please turn off the show. You have to listen at your own discretion. And, um, you know, we have to know what's good for us to listen to. And if these subjects will bother you, you need to turn off the show. And that won't be hurting my feelings at all. And, um, you know, you have to listen at your own discretion. And young people under the age of 18, I just ask that you know you have someone listen to this show with you, an adult, and maybe someone who like a, who you really trust. If you have a parent who who's uh, available and cares about what you're listening to, or if you have a teacher, student, uh, like a, a, a youth counselor at school, someone who you know who you look up to, like a coach or a guidance counselor who can listen to the show with you to make sure it's something you should be listening to because child online safety is a huge issue and I just did a couple we did a few shows on that just not too long ago uh, regarding just how unsafe the internet really is for children because there's all kinds of child sexual predators out there and crazy people who will try to do anything to get a hold of children they'll use any means necessary and uh, you think they're just people your own age, you know, that, that just want to talk and hang out, and it turns out to be a child sexual predator, and so don't ever meet anybody that you, you don't know that you just meet online. That That is so serious. If Just start looking in the news at the reports that are coming out uh, that are from children who are, who have been, uh, you know, fallen uh, prey to a child sexual predator just because they, they met them online and they wanted to meet somewhere after school supposedly and it was some sort of they thought it was a buddy of theirs who was like 12 years old and it turns out to be a child sexual predator so you want to be really careful keep yourself safe and really the show there's a lot of adult material on here that um, that's why I ask people that are under the age of 18 really young to have someone listen to this with you because they want to you want to make sure it's okay for you to listen to because ultimately it's about child abuse and stopping child abuse but the issue is, is there's a lot of adult um, you know adult material so you just want to make sure that you're okay to be listening to this, right? So we're going to continue on with this article. And um, I don't know, this is just, we can't talk about child sexual abuse enough. One in three girls and one in seven boys are sexually abused before the age of 18. That's some stats that I found here on this article. I've seen those stats elsewhere. The statistics really are quite plain. They're in front of our face. Um just about almost any website regarding child abuse or child sexual abuse will will show that there's uh, one in three girls and one in six or s- at least six or seven boys who will have been sexually abused or abused, really, um, 
before the age of 18. So it's just too many. One, that's just too many. You know what I mean? In a room of three women, uh, one of you will have been possibly, uh, by just the stats, um, sexually abused under the as a child under the age of 18. And if in a room of six or seven men, that the same thing, right? So it's really wrong. It has to stop. Uh, there's a lot of issues surrounding it, and that's why I think we just need to keep looking at it and keep talking about it and get the public aware of what's going on and what is really happening out there, why these things happen, and what we have to do to keep a lookout for children, right? Because children cannot often, actually most of the time, speak up for themselves, and they really have no voice. And so we have to look out for them. We, you know, They're counting on us to protect them. They have human rights, uh, child rights, and um, a lot of people, that's what people ask me, like, why, if you're interested in child, human rights, why would you be interested in child abuse issues? Because children have rights. And the whole issue is, is children's rights are quite often easily overlooked because they don't have a voice. An adult who doesn't like something that's happening to them, all they have to do is complain and make some noise, and then you know, quite often uh, somebody will do something about it. But children don't have that voice; they don't have that opportunity, and but they have every single right, of, you know, afforded to them that he that, that an adult has. You know, the right to life, the right to protection, the right to safety, the right to shelter, the right to food, to, to education, to government, to health care, uh, you name it. They've got all those rights. They have the right to play. They have the right to spirituality. They have the right to uh, everything that an adult has, actually a little bit more because of the protection situation. So I study human rights, child rights, and I know all about it. Um, you know, child abuse is uh, it's a, it's a, it's a crime. It's against the law. And we really have to start looking at it like that. Uh, people have been, for, for since time began, pushing this under the carpet, uh, you know, just keeping it silent. Nobody wants to deal with it. Why? Because it's in our own homes. It's in our own churches. It's in our own schools. And it's extremely hard to get people to behave and stop abusing children. So um, that's why nobody wants to tackle it. But really, I think every single person out there should tackle this and uh, make some change for these children who have no choice but to be sit there and take the abuse that these adults are dishing out, and uh, sometimes youth, uh, you know. It's a problem, and it needs to stop, and the only way we're going to stop it is to keep talking. I hope everybody that hears this show will follow suit, get their own blog talk show, or do whatever they can, and if they're already helping, that's great. I know there's so many people that listen to my show that do a lot more work than I do uh, to help children. And so the the whole issue is, is we all have to get on uh, with the program here and start making and start finding ways to protect children and uh, really to, to help parents out who are having these problems because a lot of times it's a, it's a substance abuse problem, a, a mental illness, uh, emotional problems and all kinds of other factors involved in, in uh, poor parenting skills and, and choices that they make as far as disciplining their children and a lot of times they're just mentally ill and uh, or emotionally sick you know, and they just can't cope and so therefore they shouldn't be allowed to keep these children in their home. But unfortunately they do, and so the abuse continues on. And everybody around them, obviously there's family members, uh, school teachers, other people involved who could, neighbors, you know, who could step in and say, hey, what you're doing to that child is not right, it's, it's a crime, it needs to stop. But instead of that, they just turn a blind eye. And so these children end up dead. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, instead of getting infuriated and mad, I decided to get proactive and get busy and start doing something because I grew up in an abusive home. I know what it's like for everybody to look the other way. And um, people looked their, the other way their whole lives. They actually supported my parents and did not support the children. And so all seven of us suffered under the hands of two people who had enormous support from neighbors and friends uh, who were allowed to go ahead and physically, uh, emotionally, psychologically, and sexually abuse uh, their well, their children. So it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. And we can't protect the abusers anymore. You know what I mean? The children are the ones that need protection, not the abusers. So, you know, there we go. So that's why I'm doing this show. So important. So we'll get right into it. Um, the, we left off yesterday looking at uh, um, the behavior, behavioral symptoms of possible sexual abuse. And... They did say, you know, that just because a child has one or, or more of these symptoms doesn't necessarily mean that there has been, you know, child sexual abuse. What it does mean is it's a little bit of a, it's a bit of an alarm, you know, it's an alert to actually explore the situation more fully. 
you know, it's something that, you know, if you know a child really well and all of a sudden their behavior, they're, 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 there's changes in their behaviors, um, then you know there's got to be something going on with that child, right? So it's a good idea to investigate and really make sure, right, that there isn't abuse or child sexual abuse going on. Uh, they, they listed off here nightmares, sleep problems, and this is from Stop It Now. Uh, you can check out their website. It's a great website. Uh, nightmares, uh, sleep problems, um, extreme fears without obvious explanation. This is if they were suddenly, they were happy-go-lucky children, no problem, everything was great, and all of a sudden they're having nightmares. Uh, they can't sleep. They've got a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. Um, you know, sudden mood changes, angry, moody, uh, clingy, checked out, you know, and, and shows significant changes in eating habits. And an older child might start behaving like a younger child again, developing fear of certain places or or resists being left alone with an adult or young person for an unknown reason. That's something to be very aware of because children will, they might not be able to tell you in words that they don't want to be with that adult or that person for whatever reason if there's abuse going on or, or sexual child sexual abuse. But they might let you know by squirming and getting uncomfortable as soon as you start coming up to the house. And so you really want to be alert and watch out and stop assuming that your child is just throwing a fit um, and take a look at what's going on with that child. It's just a matter of parenting skills. And I think that, you know, I know that I'm not a parent, but if I was, I grew, I grew up in an abusive home. So, you know, I would have to make extra careful be extra sure that I had some good parenting skills, you know what I mean, um, to make sure that I would be you know, that child's protector and looking out for that child. A lot of parents get upset with their kids because they just think they're throwing tantrums and fits, right? And they don't realize that that child has experienced something in that home that they that, that was abusive. So, you know, you want to be very careful and, and you really should, you have to protect your children. You owe it to them. It's the law. And, uh, you know, not only that, they're counting on, on you to do that as a parent, right? And if they show uh, resistance and all of a sudden bathing, uh, toilet, to uh, toilet, or removing their clothes, even in appropriate situations, like for for a bath, if all of a sudden they get upset about that and stuff, but they never used to, that's a clue. There's so many different signs here. We left off with um, um, engages in adult-like sexual activities with toys, objects, or other children. That's where we left off yesterday. Um, because children don't know, um, you know, really too much about sexual acts unless you want they're watching a lot of tv they shouldn't be watching or watching something going on in the home that they shouldn't be watching kids should be allowed to be kids you know what i mean and um so if you if all of a sudden they never were before but all of a sudden they're starting to do uh different kind of things with their toys and stuff then you will that's a clue for you right uh develop special relationship with older friends that may include unexplained money gifts or privileges that's something that they covered on child online safety uh, you know there's people out there that will give your child gifts and money and and uh, different things like that though and and you have to be really aware of who your child spends their day with uh, and your youth you know your teenagers and stuff right young people you have to really be aware of this there's a, a lot of sick people out there and really that the numbers are crazy when you start thinking about it there's I think the there's 750 uh, thousand child sexual predators on the internet every single night or something like that that's off the fbi's website the fbi has a great website regarding online safety for children and i would highly recommend everybody check it out if you have children at home and they are online quite a bit and, the, and you're concerned for their safety online safety check out the fbi's website man there is some good information there these guys are on top of it because they're trying to bust these people and um, it's really a good idea to get it from the source the fbi i think is, is an awesome source for information regarding online safety for for everyone, including children, uh, especially for children, right? So that's a really good website. I really like it. Um, intentionally harms himself or herself, for example, drugs, alcohol use, uh, cutting, burning, running away, sexual promiscuity. Let's say your child was never doing this before, right? You're, you ha you're, let's say your young person was never using drugs or alcohol, as far as you knew, never uh, s uh, self-harming cutting or, or anything like that or burning themselves, never running away, never having any kind of, you know, sexual tendencies or pro promiscuity, uh, was never hurt, trying to intentionally hurt themselves, and all of a sudden they start doing this, you know there's something going on. You know what I mean? It's not just a fad, right? Um, you know, the the sad thing is is people become so busy, they don't have time to, to, to 
really parent the way that they should be able to parent. It's unfortunate. But a lot of kids spend way too much time on their own. I know that's what I used to spend a lot of time on my own because my mom was always throwing me out of the house. So, um, you know, I, and it was really my, the best choice because if I stayed in the house, then she was just going to abuse me, so it was better off for me to be on the street. But the thing is, is... Um, you know, kids don't necessarily want to hurt themselves or get involved with drugs and or start harming themselves or running away or being sexually promiscuous, you know. They don't intentionally do that. It's it's uh, generally something wrong. Something's going wrong with the child. And so you that's a, that's a wake-up call for family members around that child to say, hey, you know, is there something going on? And not to just start blaming, oh, you're just a punk kid. You know, my family members just thought I was just a... Uh, a jerk, you know, they didn't care that my mom was abusing me and uh, that my dad was abusing me as well. They just didn't care. Um, there was family members that could have stepped in. They just didn't, and, uh, you know, shame on them. But, you know, oh, well, I have to forgive and move on. Otherwise, it just eats me up. So I refuse to be, uh, you know, kept, you know, sort of stay in that cycle of uh, hatred and anger and stuff like that. I absolutely refuse to do that. But the thing is, is that's a, that's a warning sign. You know, if your kid was just doing okay and all of a sudden now they're they're just doing all this crazy stuff, there, there could be a problem there, right? Uh, there probably more than likely is. It's underlying, and you really need to find out what it is if you want to save your child from a life of, uh, really, a life of death, right? Becomes increasingly uh, secretive around use of the Internet or cell phone. That's another way that you can you might realize or, you know, see that your child's behavior might show us signs that uh, that they're have suffered or are suffering in, from child sexual abuse, develops physical symptoms such as unexplained uh, pain, uh, bruises, and um, t- sexually transmitted diseases, things like this, or pregnancy. Um, this is really something that we have to look at, look out, look into, and look out for our children. Right? Just so important uh, because they can't, you know, they they need they need protection. They really do. They can't do it on their own. And like they said, you know, a child shouldn't have to be their only protection against uh, child sexual abuse. Right? It's it's up to the parents and it's up to society, really, to get involved. And not just the parents. You can't just leave it all on them either. It's really going to take society. It's going to take all of us in the community. Every single person everywhere is going to have to get involved. And, of course, the abusers aren't going to want to get involved because they don't want to stop doing what they're doing. But I think that we could narrow in on a lot of these abusers if everybody would pay attention. And we could really do some good work to get children away from from uh, from abusers and get abusers put where they need to be, which is away, and, you know, have them do the crime, you know what I mean, do, do the time. You do the crime, you do the time, you know what I mean? I believe a lot of these abusers are getting away with it. Nobody wants to report it. Nobody wants to step in. Nobody wants to be that person to step in and report it. And, you know, that's what's wrong. So these guys, uh, these women and men, because there's women abusers out there too, get away with it, you know what I mean? And they walk free. And here's these children. Um, you know, their lives are completely, actually, I'm sorry, but mostly ruined uh, because they will never have that innocence back. They will never have that the that the feeling of innocence, right? I was born into that, so I never experienced it in my lifetime. So I don't know what I don't what I haven't missed, you know what I mean? But a child who who had this beautiful sense of innocence, right, uh, growing up in a, in a home that was loving and caring, and all of a sudden they they they're, they're abused by a by a cousin or an aunt or even maybe a stepfather or or even a father, right, or, or somebody starts abusing them, it, it it takes away their innocence, right? It it completely they lose their childhood. Not only that, they they have all these issues they're going to have to work through when they get older. Um, especially when they get older, and it usually hits in your 30s, uh, then all of a sudden, you know, I mean, their, their life is just a, it, it could become a, just a mess. And there's, I forget what the amount of money was that the in the United States alone that was spent every year trying to uh, help adult survivors of child abuse. It was, it was in the billions, it was in the billions of dollars spent on uh, therapy and uh, and just all kinds of resources and stuff trying to help adult survivors. Why? Because there's 600 million adult survivors of child abuse, whether it's sexual, physical, uh, emotional, psych- uh, psychological, spiritual. It's all 600 million survivors just in, in North America. or It might have been um, just the United States. I'm not sure. I don't have that in front of me. But 600 million, I remember that number. That's way, way too many. And But that's the survivors. That doesn't count the ones who have been killed. Uh, the poor babies and, and young people, young toddlers and young children who get killed every single day uh, due to abuse, right? So that's why we have to really step up to the plate and do the right thing and help these kids out, you know what I mean? It's it's just ridiculous. 
And really, it needs to stop. It says, if you see behaviors that concern you, please call Stop It Now's confidential toll-free helpline at one eight 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 prevent P-R-E-V-E-N-T, uh, for supportive guidance, information, or resources, or visit us on the web at www.stopitnow.org. And this is a great article. I really love this article. And I pulled this right off the website there, and you can get this for yourself and read it. Some of the information on here is a bit uh, adults adult-oriented, and really I don't want to read it out on the air because I don't know where the players are. There could be young children, young kids listening to this. So some of it I won't, uh, I won't be reading. But um, you can go and get that. You can just pull up the whole um, article and just get it for yourself. It says, why do people sexually abuse? It says, there is no usual pathway to, se- to a sexual offense. Each person who sexually abuses a child is motivated by issues that are unique to that individual. Uh, media images of child molesters and Portrayals of their personalities may actually make it more difficult to recognize inappropriate behaviors in those we know. Sometimes people who are attracted to adults and have intimate sexual relationships with other adults may sexually approach children when they are under under unusual stress, like losing a job or getting a divorce. Uh, Some people's primary sexual attraction is children. Uh, Some may never act out on those feelings, it says. Some never act out on those feelings, but um, it's just they've talked to enough child sexual predators to know that some child sexual predators that that's just that's who their primary sexual attraction and so there's something wrong with that you know what i mean um there's and that, that's a sickness it's an illness it's an actual disease um it's a problem and, and whether it's ever curable i don't know i don't have never haven't done you know obviously i'm not a scientist or a psychotherapist or a psychologist or anything like that but the thing is is i haven't done a whole lot of studying i study more on child abuse uh, victims than actual abusers but the thing is is these people you know i don't care who they are they need to stop what they're doing and get a grip and get a hold of themselves and stop what they're doing and just uh, have some control. I mean, that's ridiculous just to think that you can go out and take a child and do whatever you want with it, um, this girl or boy, and just just think that that's okay and it shouldn't be against the law. I think they really need to start tossing the book at these people that do these things to children. And I don't mean just a few years away. I really think we need to start seeing some real change. I think if we started seeing some public hangings or something, people might decide that they better straighten up their behavior if they're just going to be hauled out into the to the downtown for a public hanging. Uh, it might change the things a little bit. But people think, oh, well, if I do some time, I'll just go sit in a cushy jail cell somewhere for 20 years watching TV and hanging out with the bros. You know, I mean, it just it doesn't seem to me that the, that, the crime, that the punishment fits the crime, right? And I'm not saying we should go around lynching people either because that's just as wrong. What I'm saying is that the sentences have to match the crime. So instead of just putting these people in cushy jail cells and having them watch TV and supposedly rehabilitate them, you know, these child sexual predators, and I'm talking people who are violent child sexual offenders who continue to offend and show actually no no remorse and will not ever be rehabilitated, what do you do with them? You know what I mean? I think there should just be some dark hole where you just shove them down there and just too bad because that's where they belong so they can kill each other off, right? Honestly, they're killing our children. You know, I don't even have children, but it makes me angry because... They're killing and getting a hold of children and killing them. Uh, And parents and and people walk down the street every day and they do not care. You know, they see all this stuff in the paper and they see what's going on, but they don't care because it's not their own child. You know, the whole issue is, is like my heart goes out to all these people out here, all these parents out here who have lost a child to a sexual child, sexual predator. It just makes me so mad because it's just, it's just sick. And the thing is, is government needs to step up and start getting serious about this. Lawmakers and government need to take full head-on action on this. You know what I mean? I can't believe people are getting off and away with this stuff and allowed to live back in communities and within 100 feet of a school zone. I mean, come on. And what, they try to track them, but they know they lose track of them. You should see how many people they lose track of. And um, you can check all this stuff out on like the National Sex Offenders uh, websites. You can find out where these child sexual predators actually live. If they live in your neighborhood, you can keep an eye out for them. And I'm, I'm not talking about harassing people. I'm talking about protecting yourself and making sure that they are not allowed to get a hold of your children. It's just so important, right? And so they said here, I'll just continue right on here. Some people who sexually abuse children were victims of abuse or neglect as children. It's not a good excuse, just a fact. Although having been abused as a child heightens the risk for becoming someone who sexually abuses children, the vast majority of sexual abuse victims live their lives without ever sexually abusing others. So that's very true. 
Um, they've done studies on that, enough studies to know that quite a, a, there's a few people who do go on, obviously, to perpetuate the cycle. Uh, my mom was one of those, right? She was abused as a child, and she perpetuated the cycle. But I stopped it. So it depends, you know, on just on the person, right? If they're willing to stop the abuse and just say, no, enough is enough. We need to have a good life. I want to have a good life. I don't want to, you know what I mean? I, I don't want to... Uh, continue on that cycle of abuse that my mom put on me, which who knows what her mother went through, right? Um, the whole issue is, is uh, it's just bad. It's a cycle. It needs to stop, right? And so a, a lot of uh, child abuse um, survivors go on to, to be awesome parents because they know what their kids went They know what they went through, and they don't want their kids to go through that. So they're actually almost a little bit overprotective maybe, but that's good because you can't ever protect your child enough from abuse, right? And from, we want your kids to have a nice, happy, fun life. And you certainly don't want them to be uh, coming in contact with somebody who's going to sexually abuse them. And 90% of uh, abuse is done, is hap that happens towards children is a family member or a friend of the family, right? It's usually a family member. But, it, you know, sometimes there's a family friend in there too. So that's the whole issue. The child generally knows who's sexually abusing them and they know them well. So you want to know who your child is with where they spend their time, you know, if you if you your child is, stays with someone during the day while you're working, you need to find an excuse to get away from work and go pop in on them every now and then, you know, it's so important because that's how you that's how most people bust people who sexually abuse their child, they just pop in unexpectedly, then they find these people doing these sick things with their kids and their kids they are just like oh it's a game, this is what we do when we come over here, right, so you know this is just what's going on, this is the truth. You can read it for yourself. Um, there's there's many, 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 many cases of this, and it's all over the web. So just start doing some research. Don't just listen to me. Uh, you know, go get your own information off of the web. There's awesome information out here regarding child abuse, and especially child sexual abuse, because now it's being talked about, whereas before it was so taboo to talk about it. Uh, you know, the, there's lots of great information here, and I really think that everybody should get their own information, start getting educated on this issue, and stop sitting around saying, oh, that just couldn't happen, that's just not possible. Well, you know, people, if you want to live in the dark and you want to live with your eyes closed and pretend it doesn't happen, go right ahead. Uh, but then you want to be uh, paying attention because it could happen to you. You know what I mean? Stop living in the dark and, and closing closing your eyes, everybody. Right? We have to realize this is happening um and it does happen, and it's a shame, and it really needs to stop, right? Just because we want to believe something isn't happening doesn't mean it's going to go away, right? It's like, well, if we believe that child sexual abuse doesn't happen, then maybe it'll just disappear. That's not the case, right? It's happening, and we need to get serious, and we need to start looking after our, our, our kids. And really, it's up to the parents. I really believe that parents are 100% responsible for their children. They have these children. They shouldn't have to. They shouldn't really be pawning off the responsibility on society or anybody else. They should be responsible for that child, where that child is, who that child is with. Take a proactive, uh, you know, instead of worrying about what they're going to eat and buy at the store, uh, start thinking about what's going on with their children, right? And that's the sad part. Most people actually don't care too much about what's going on with their children and put themselves first. You have to put your kids first place. Honestly, I mean, well, you know, I mean, honestly, in your family situation, right? The kids should come first. That's just my opinions on that. But that there would be a whole lot less abuse out there if this is was the case, right? There might even be no abuse out there if that was the case. So we have about a minute left. I'm the Canada Regional Director for Dreamcatchers for Abused Children, and you can check our website out. We have some awesome information on that website regarding signs and symptoms, uh, how to report child abuse. There's all kinds of links and references and. Uh, great information out there for people who work with children, po their police departments, um, you know, child care workers, daycare workers, um, you know, pediatricians and different things like that. There's information packets that we can get to you and send out to you for free that have awesome information in there regarding signs and symptoms, all the different signs and symptoms, what to look for, and so just like a whole... Uh, resource and kit of information so get a hold of us if you need uh, any information at http dreamcatchers for abused children dot com and you know thanks everybody for tuning in and I really appreciate your support you know just being just knowing that uh, a lot of people are listening to my show and I really appreciate it and um, you know it, it's it, it, it's time out of your day that you're taking to listen to this show 
you know, I really, I do appreciate it. It does mean a lot to me. And, um, you know, from one survivor to another, my heart's with you. And if you've survived child abuse, I'm just so happy that you're actually still here with us. And if, you, if you're still struggling, just keep reaching out, you know. And make sure you get help no matter where you find, you can find it, right? A therapist, counselor, a group support situation, uh, you know, or just a really good friend. Make sure you reach out to somebody and just don't suffer in silence, you know. That's what I did for about 40 years. And I'm so glad that I stopped, uh, that I actually spoke out and, because of silence, I broke the silence, and it makes me happy. So, um, you know, everybody, take care. Uh, check out my blog, my blog talk radio page. Uh, you can have there's a link there to my book. It's called The Life of Death: The Redemption. It's at Lulu, and it's soon going to be at Barnes Noble and at Amazon. And it's called A Life of Death: The Redemption. And it's my story, and uh, all the proceeds are going to Dream Catchers for Abused Children to help raise funds to promote awareness, education, and prevention of child abuse. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.